So welcome to uh, Canvas Hour. And uh, the focus today is um, using the group feature in Canvas, which allows you to put students into working groups for various um, uh, assignments and, and, and um, purposes you might have. Uh, so our own Terry Peak from Instructional Technology Services is here to present. Terry, let me hand it over to you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. I have a short presentation and then we'll go from there. Okay. So um, talking about groups. Um, so basically, um, if you're breaking everybody into groups, um, you can set up groups for assignments, uh, discussions, and in-class work. It can be graded or ungraded. Um, when you set up the group, after you set, created the group, you'll actually go in and create the assignment and the discussion and assign those to the group. Um, so uh, those will be separate from any other assignments the student have. Um, so these groups can be set up so you can do something semester long or you can have a session that is uh, just uh, a week or two. It just depends. It, it, it only matters uh, with the way the group is set up um, or how, uh, it only matters that you set up a group for each one of these uh, areas. And um, um, with groups, you can uh, set up, as I said, for discussions. And this, oops, I'm sorry, I did go to the next page. Um, so you can look and review the activity of the group within the pay, within the course. Um, you can create groups manually or automatically. Um, there are two functions of groups. There's a group set, which will it, which within your course you can set an overall group. Uh, that can contain all the students in the group, in, in the course, into different groups. And they can either be assigned, the students can enroll themselves, or you can just go ahead and flat assign everybody into a group and your group is done. Or you can create uh, specific groups within the group set. The group set's kind of like a mini course. And then depending on how you set up the groups, either automatically or manually, um, uh, then you'll have our many groups that you that you need uh, space uh, within the course. Um, instructors can assign group leaders to each group, or um, students can be allowed to sign up for whatever group they want in. Or, as I said, faculty can automatically um, create the group for them. Um, and. Um, so one of the really cool things uh, about groups is that um, with the group set, I can create multiple group sets and then have them set up for different areas. Um, so for example, I can do a group set for a partner pairs assignment. I can create a group set for a case discussion two weeks later, and I can have a group that I set up that's that is for the project and that the project starts day one of the course and ends day uh, at the end of week 16, that can be, I can actually have those three separate groups. I can also create a pairs group and then shift people between those pairs anytime that I want to, because I can also manually uh, edit and update the groups. Um, um, let's see. Um, as an instructor, also you can also view and manage groups and members in one area on the same page, which we'll show you. Um, I can, as I said, move students between, but, uh, between groups. And if there's no students assigned to a group, I have a list of students that aren't assigned. And that's all part of uh, the group and group set function. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. And go to, okay. So um, the first thing you'll notice is I'm on, I'm in a group page and to get to my group page, um, I just go into Canvas. You're still on PowerPoint, Terry. It's still, I thought I told it to go to group. Oh, 
What up if I had to share after I did that? So I just go to my uh, area called people, click on people. And in the corner, I've got a button that says plus group set. Um, and then I can just click the group set, give it a name. Um, and then I can know I'll self sign up or I can require group. Uh, uh, and if so, I can require group members to be in the same section. What is meant by same section is that if I'm creating a group and I have, let's say three sections of the same class, a Monday, Tuesday class, or a Monday, Wednesday class at 8 a.m., a Monday, Wednesday class at 11 a.m., and a Tuesday, Thursday class at three o'clock, um, I can merge all those sections into one course for ease of grading and to make my life a little bit easier. Um, however, what I can also do is when I create my groups, I can check this box and make sure that everybody is in that same section. So all my Tuesday students are built into group sets. All my Wednesday students are built into group sets. And all my uh, and all my early morning Wednesday class or my afternoon Wednesday class are built in that group set. Um, and I call create. I happen to know that I have thirty six people in this class, so I'm going to click six groups, and I am going to go ahead and click save. And this will allow me to put together these groups. Now, earlier I had mentioned that I can see all my unassigned students, which are right over here on the side. Um, and uh, now one of the things that I have with this is what I did was I created the number of groups first. When I create the number of groups first, I can actually go through and if I want to uh, add some students to the groups. Let's say, for example, I had all my groups created with six students each and discovered there were a couple of students uh, that had not signed up for a group yet. So I can go through and then pull those students into a group just like that, just drag and drop um, if I want to do that. And um, so uh, that is... Um, one of the reasons that when I set up a group, a group set, I want to make sure that if I'm going to click self self sign up groups, that I create the groups first. Uh, we discovered when we were talking about this on uh, I think Monday, is that if you allow self sign up but you limit don't tell it how many groups to uh, create, but instead set it up um, to a certain number of members, but don't set the, a limit on the groups. Uh, what happens is, is that group um, will be created. And when you create that group, since I don't have any groups over here, I can't move students into a group. So a best practice is if you're going to have the students uh, able to sign themselves up for their own group, make sure that you tell them how many groups that you want before you do that. Uh, removing a group set is very easy. I just click the snowman and I click delete. And that's all I need to do. Now, if... I'm not going to allow self sign up on this group. I'm just going to create a group that's going to have uh, six groups. Um, and um, I'm going to go ahead and click save. Oops. Click save, and then my group is automatically created. It takes a, a minute or two at the most. 
And so I know I have a group. I've got six groups. It automatically distributes the students. Um, assignment group one has seven students in it. And each of these icons here is a little arrow. When I push it, it tells me who the students that are assigned to the group are. Pretty simple. Okay. Now, um, there's another way that I can create a group as well. And this is the last group set that we'll create. Uh, I'm gonna create a group set. Uh, and this one's going to be um, This is going to be my project group. Um, I'm going to create 12 groups because I want about three people in each group uh, for the project. We'll make, we'll make it nine. That'll be about four people to a group. Um, and, um, but this time, I'm going to create the groups myself. So I click the button that says, I'll create groups later. Okay. And then for this one, this is going to, be going to be a completely manual process. So what I do is I just click the group name. Okay, and these guys will be doing the history. And I'm going to have a move. I think um, six is my limit. Okay. So there's my first group. And as you can see, then I'd have to just slowly create all these groups. And if I'm doing six groups, this could be a while. But the beauty of this one is then once I have the groups created, then I can just toss my users into these groups, drag and drop. And when I created the second group, um, I made a mistake and I said I didn't establish a group limit. So I can go back and edit this, type in the limit to the group. Now it says I have six students and then I'll continue to add my students into the group. And it conveniently tells me that I have a full group. So those are the basically the three ways uh, that I can create the group. I can either create a group set and then say later and then manually create all my groups. Uh, or I can create the groups where I tell it how many groups I want. And then uh, I can assign people to the group. Uh, or I can group set it up so it automatically distributes um, people to the group. So those are the, again, these are different ways um, that I've created my groups. Um, now, the next part about groups is that, as I said earlier, when you create the group, and then once you've created the group, um, you create assignments for the group. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to assignments and I'm going to create an assignment that's yet that's for that group. And this will be okay. and the first thing I'll come down to that I'll come across is if I'm scrolling, is you will see a section here that says assignment group. This is not where you're going to have a, a group for your, uh, assign the uh, group the assignment. The, it, uh, Canvas has an unfortunate terminology issue here. Their assignment group is, if you're weighing your grades, it's like a category in Blackboard. So they called it an assignment group. So if you're creating an assignment, you're not gonna go to assignment group you're going to scroll down and you're going to click this button here under assign, under group assignment and click, this is a group assignment. And then uh, 
then you're going to um, choose the group set. And in this uh, option, I'm going to click my assignment group. Now, if I decided um, that I needed a new assignment group, I can also create it this way. So for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell it's a group assignment. I'm gonna assign it to the assignment group, click save, and we're good to go. Uh, this assignment's ready to go. I think it needs to have a grade, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's put a, a points in here. Oh, it's already set up, good. Okay, so um, I'm gonna create another assignment. And we'll call this parent share. Let's say every couple of weeks we do a parent share assignment. Okay, I can create this one and give it a group assignment. But now I'm going to click this new, it says I can assign it to a group set. But instead, I'm going to click this new group category. call it parent share, uh, split it into 18 groups and click save and it'll put them into uh, the parent share group and then click save. And this assignment is ready to go. And I can also go back and check on this by going back to people, click parent share. And then there's my parent share groups that it's created for me. Um, the last thing I want to touch base on with uh, as far as assigning things to groups is my discussion board. So I'm going to have a discussion board that I'm going to create. Um, and so I think what I'll do is I will open up this Canvas, this Canvas applications discussion and click edit. And I'm going to assign this to a group discussion. So again, I create the discussion, and this this way I just edited a discussion, give it to a group, so that they can work on that as a group, assign the points, set the due dates, and click save, and then the discussion uh, areas um, are assigned to that group. Um, so the key keys here, just creating on on this on groups is you can have a variety of ways that you can create the group. Uh, there's specifically three. Um, you can create a self-enroll group. You can create a group that you uh, enroll everybody into, uh, or and these are both group sets. And then you can create just individual groups. And then again, whenever I create any kind of assignment for the groups, either an assignment or a discussion, I create the assignment and then I assign it to the group. Uh, with that, uh, are there any, does anybody have any questions, um, thoughts about groups, uh, anything that they'd like to uh, uh, question me, ask me about the process? So if I want to change the groups, uh, let's say every two, three weeks, I can create different groups and give a different group name. Um, you can do that, or uh, mm -hmm. actually, that's a great question. I can actually go back here to people. And I can, let's say I have my assignment group. Or better yet, let's say I have my project group. Well, that's the... Uh, Let's do this. Way. Let's go to the assignment group. So let's just say I'm assignment group, and I've got another assignment that I've created. So I can open up the assignment groups, and you know, realizing maybe that this student was not a really good working with everybody else person. Um, so I can actually, um, you know, move some people around. Um, because maybe the, in class, they seem to work really well together, but in a group, maybe they don't. So I can, or, you know, I can just move people around randomly because, you know, I like some of the things that they say and they could help provide um, motivation to 
other students within the group. So I can literally just kind of go around here and um, pull students around until I kind of have the mix that I want and change the groups like that. It's kind another of thing I can- I'm sorry, go ahead. Another thing that I can do, um, and we talked about this uh, a couple of times, is, you know, maybe in this many groups, I have some students that, you know, I've got six groups of six people each and halfway through the semester, I've got some students that just don't wanna participate or, or are just putting minimal effort to no effort into their group project. Well, you know, I can also do this. I can just create a group. Um, okay. Call it assignment group seven. And, you know, I can then pull those students. Now, by the way, if your name gets pulled in here, it's not because I think you're gonna be uncooperative. I'm just randomly drawing people into the groups. So I can randomly draw people into those groups if I want to. Come on, my hand. There we go. See, and it, and it, but allow me to pull people into groups and I can create another group if I wanted to. Um, so yes, not only can I rearrange them, but I can actually create additional groups within the group set. But can I still keep the original groups if I want to go back instead of moving people? Can I create a separate group with new people? And keep you them? can, yes, you can create as many groups as you want. Um, you can create a group for every assignment if you'd like to. Mm. So. so I have to give a name for each, not each group within a group, it's just a group heading. Well, whenever, yeah, you just give it a name. You might uh, give it the yeah. name of the assignment and then it's gonna number the group automatically based on however many groups that you've created or that you've told uh, Canvas to create. But if I want to have, let's say I want to have the same group for three weeks, and then I want to have different groups for another three weeks, but I want to keep the original group, which I want to come back. Can I do that? Sure, just give it a different name. Okay. And I actually, I'm in this course, I've actually got a group for the assignment, a group for discussion, a group for a, pa a parent share, and a group for a project. I just Groups name them differently, but they'll, all of the members of the group will still come out of the course. Group set. The group set, yes. Hey, Cherry, can we go back to the parent share? So mm -hmm. when um, I asked about that last week, I think, and here's the background for me. I'm looking for ways uh, where students can do small group interaction that is safer than pulling your desk up next to somebody and breathing in their face because we can't do that right now. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying you know, so in a think pair share, typically you turn to the person next to you, it's a quick and dirty kind of thing. You pose a question, explain in your own words, blah, blah, blah. What happens if we change in, in this equation, if we change the seven to a 14, you know, just whatever kind of thing to kind of get a feel for where people are. It's quick and it's informal. So if I wanted to kind of make that happen in my classroom without having people breathe on each other, I was thinking, you know, having existing partners who don't need to be any place near them is the simplest thing, just have them take out their phones and text each other. I, you know, I post the question or mention the question in the, in the middle of my lecture and then say, talk to your partner about blah, blah, or is there a better way than that? That's a great way to do it. I mean, all they really need to know is who they're paired with. Right. And, you know, so you, and, put it, and, you use that you just know, to form so, the partnerships. They get so, to know them. Mm -hmm. We do that maybe, you know, for four or five weeks. And then maybe mm -hmm. we want to refresh it or maybe or maybe not, yeah. you know. 
Yeah. So Noah and Esther could be sitting there just you make the announcement. No one, no one, no one, and Esther can just start texting away to each other, and and, and yeah. they would. And be I'm able not to spending a lot thing. of class time putting people in pairs. Mm -mm. I mean, yeah. because basically, and actually, this is probably a really good opportunity to have um, is. I'm going to let Adela share her screen because she has the ability to, uh, we have a, uh, a login that doesn't have any admin rights. And so we get a better, a clearer picture of what's going to look like from the student standpoint. So Adela, can you share your screen and bring in random, our random person in and show people what their groups look like from their point of view? Can you see me? Yep, I can see you. Okay. So what do you want me to do? Yeah, just go ahead and uh, open up the course and let's see your group, how you would see groups. So for, well, first of all, I now, I have this new button called groups in my global navigation. So that's different. Um, which group do you want me to go to? Um, at that, whatever group you're in. Let's go to the parent share group since that's one we're talking about. Which are you logged in under? The admin. random admin or random user? Random, random student. Admin. Random admin. Okay. okay. Should be the first one on your people list. So, and it's the summer campus summer workshop series one is our course. There's nothing there. Now I notice that you're your group's item is not here. There is it. So you wanted me to go to Yeah. But you don't have well, how come you don't have a groups button? I thought you were because I know I put you in the class. Well, the groups button is in global navigation. Right. But there's also this list of the course groups here on yeah. the right side. So when I click on pair and share 15. Okay. That would be, yeah, because I think that that's where your parent shared, shared, shared and paired. So. What should I be doing? Just, uh, well, I'm not seeing your screen with your shared and paired. You're not seeing my screen? Uh, I, I see, I, I see the, I, uh, there we go. That's the one I wanna see. So, and then, so there's not really any information, but you see recent activity or you can go to, can you go to discussions? Yes. Uh, and go to that, go to the group that's called uh, um, go to groups and then pull the group out. It's called discussions. So you've got discussion group one. And okay, so you don't have any messages in here. And So they could just use this fun this discussion function to talk to each other about my little question too. They don't need to pull out their phones. No, because all they'd what have to do, do they, is sign what up. What do they see that tells them who their partner is? Um, you know, I 
I, Adela, can you look through that? Two, I never, I never thought of that. Are there two people? Are you sure you put two people in my, in my group? Yeah, let me check. Your parents share 15? Yes. Yeah, it's you and Tracy Mendoza. I wonder why her name isn't here. See, it says under group members, it just has me. Hmm. Okay, well, hold on just a second through the magic of the magic of canvas. Um, anybody, Noah, are you in the are you uh, in the meeting? Nope. Nope. Let me check something here. You know, I don't need to, you know, belabor this, you know, but um, it seems like it's got a lot of potential for this application. Mm -hmm. And again, all you'd have to do is assign it to the, the, the discussion board and they could have added on the discussion board. Okay, so if I wanted to have these quick little casual conversations and they did it on the discussion board, I would have to post the question in the discussion board in advance every time. Well, it it, there's a plus discussion button here, so it looks like we can add our. I can't hear you, Della. Sorry. <clears throat> there's a plus discussion uh, button. There's a what so, discussion button? Plus discussion. So okay, how it does looks that like, work? Well, you it's like adding, it's like an instructor adding a discussion. You just click on it and you can add your own, the members can add their own discussion. And I don't have to, the instructor doesn't have to like do a, uh, a, a threaded a question or anything like that. It's just a place for the two people to talk. Right. That would be perfect. Okay. So all and, we have to do is figure out who our partner is. Yeah. So we can do it ourselves or, or the instructor can put like, there's an initial discussion here by the instructor. So, Otherwise so, it's. So oh, how this oh. is, how this is different from the chat function. I'm we, sorry, your question again? Like there is a chat function also. So is there any difference or it just either or? Well, I, th I think the instructor can go back and look at these later. So they're, they, they stay, they're not uh, transient like a, a chat would be. So yeah, you know, I'm thinking for every student to have to remember to privately chat with their partner that strikes me as something that's not going to happen and it's going to kind of fall apart under its own own weight. Well, when you do up the parents shared, do you have, is there some place that you have them just put their thoughts once they've talked about everything? No, here's how that goes. It's just a classic entry level collaborative activity. You're lecturing, you pause and you mm -hmm. pose a question. Mm -hmm. And you say, take a minute, think about this question, and then turn to your partner and discuss it for a few minutes. And then, you know, as the instructor, I might go around and just cold call one or two people because I know they've been talking about it and say, what did your partner say? What did you guys talk about? And it's quick. It, the whole thing lasts two or three minutes. It's kind of no muss, no fuss. Ungraded way to break up a lecture kind of get a sense of whether students are with it and so on. But it would be dangerous to do now. So I'm looking for ways to do it in a safe way. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it, you know, it can't be cumbersome. It can't have a lot of steps. It can't be something where the instructor has to do a whole lot of planning in advance. The essence of this is you pause when the moment is right and you pose a question. One of the things I think that that would work for, and then if they were, you know, some confusion as to who they were paired with, um, you could always, let me see, let me pull this up. Do you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, let me, let me do that. Let me share. So one of the things that you could do also.
I've got my little share screen here. So, and you know, I could always just pop this information up and show the pairs. Approximately how many students are in your class? Well, I mean, you know, this is not for me, me, it's for, for other people. So, you know, right. it, uh, it could vary enormously. There are classes with 100 and there are classes with 20. Mm -hmm. But you know, I find it hard to imagine that there's not some place within Canvas that tells them who their partner is. Well, uh, or who yeah, their group members are. It it should be um, it should be when they when they're in their group, if they click on uh, people, I don't understand why it's not telling them who who their who their uh, the other person is. Unless, uh, unless it's because, is it possible she never accepted um, the invitation to class or something? Oh, I can't hear you. Uh, I think everybody, that could be the case. I'm working with a class that I created that uh, didn't go off. So it could be that those people haven't accepted the class. Um, let me see if I can't. Oh, you know what? Um, I was just looking in um, pair 15 and Noah is my yeah. other pit partner. Yeah, so. I just changed it. Oh, okay. So, but since he's an instructor, then that's probably why it's not, um, okay. why he's not showing us as a group member. He should be, in, okay. Okay, well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, they 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 should be aware of that who their who the other members of their group are. I'm just a lot of this is I had I, working with groups. The screen there were 36 faculty members enrolled in this class, and so I had a large enough class that I could look at and and show how the group the group is kind of played together and, and worked together uh, and can be moved around with that many people. Um, but if people didn't accept it, then I don't, then they don't, then Canvas doesn't know that they're in the class. Okay. So when a group member submits an assignment, like in Blackboard, the other people get an email. So is that also in Canvas? Um, you can uh, in the mail function. To great. Thank you. Thank you for the segue. I can create a, ma a, a, a mail. And then click to and uh, let's see. No, what I'm asking is the other group members, do they know, do they get a notification that one of their group members have submitted? That feature was in Blackboard, like when a group member submits an assignment for a group, the other students in the group, they get a notification so they are sure their assignment is submitted by the person who was assigned to submit. Um, is that also here? I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I have, I do not know. Adela, can you do a quick search for that? Search for, okay. In Canvas. Um, but one of the things that you can also do is with your uh, mail within Canvas, um, you can, uh, once you choose your course, then you can, uh, with your two button, choose student groups and then se actually select any one of the groups that you want to and email them. Were there any other questions while uh, Adele was set up?
So yes, they do. Thanks, Adela. Yes, group group members get a notification when there when there's a new uh, post. And a kind of a best practice is if you, I know some faculty like to have the opportunity might give the student one or more opportunities to turn in an assignment uh, with the groups. So it's probably not a good idea um, to do that. Are there any, does anybody else uh, have a question or better yet, what are some of the things that you're using groups for right now that you, um, that you think of, what are some of your group best practices that you could share with your colleagues? Alka, how about you? Do you have a lot of- Yeah, I, I do the uh, in-class activities because they work in groups. So that's when I use the groups to submit the assignments after class. Mm -hmm. I was using Blackboard. I haven't tried that in Canvas yet, but I'm thinking of doing that in the fall. Like for each class activity, they submit, instead of turning in the paper, they submit on Canvas as a group. Do you have a process that you that works for you for assigning students to groups? And is there a is there oh, something, I, something that you do that make the helps that that has shown to make your groups more successful? First, um, like initially, I just do a random because I don't know the students, and then I monitor the groups, and then I reshuffle. That's why I asked, like, how can I keep the original? So then I assign manually members based on two, three weeks after seeing how the groups are working. And how, how many groups, yeah, how many times a year, a semester do you use groups? Oh, I, I use it every time I meet. Um, it's um, all, all the class work is group work. So um, in each class period. Do you ever have the issue, the situation, say, you know, within a couple of weeks that there's one or two students that just don't seem to work together in the group? And yeah. you, would you want many, to separate many times. them? Or? Um, yes. Um, I, before the first exam, I change groups once. And then between the first and second, I change. So I keep each group at least for three, four weeks. Oh, okay. Then I change. So three times a semester, unless sometimes students, they really can't work with their groups. So those are extreme situations with when they can't work at all. Otherwise, uh, and there is always one or two who won't work. So that, that's pretty normal. Okay. I have oh. a thing in, in um, a, um, asynchronous online course where they're in small groups, um, they're responsible for setting uh, a meeting time, their own meeting time on Zoom. Uh, the expectation is they meet for about 20 minutes once a week. And I give them a very, very simple task in the beginning. The kind, um, uh, they get a little more complicated as we move along and they're always due at exactly the same time in the, in the uh, week. So it was, uh, the semester I taught that it was always due on Sunday night. And that worked generally pretty well. And about three weeks in, um, like Alika was saying, uh, we the, the task was to talk about what was going well on well in your group and what and you know what what you wanted to improve. Um, and so yeah, usually most of the groups worked. Typically there'd be one or two students who just aren't going to do it. And I just made sure that they were in the biggest group so that, you know, when they didn't do anything, nobody else was hurt. Okay. Um, do your rubrics kind of, uh, if you're using, do your rubrics reflect group work or is it assign a certain number of points for group work? Or is it just a rubric based on the overall course? 
for my use, no rubric, no grade. It was just participation. So I'd kind of monitor it. I would monitor the piece of work that they turned in every week. Uh, and I would give participation points based on that. Okay. But again, it was a very simple activity. I, you know, I, I was not looking for something. I had plenty of graded work. You know, I was just looking for some ways for them to talk to each other. Uh, yeah, it was a low stakes opportunity. Mm -hmm. They collaborated. They they spent some time together. They got you know the and and they put out a product. That yeah, is, and that are not so complicated that nobody ends up doing it. You know. Okay. And so you know, in, in Blackboard, students had their own little Zoom account. I assume mm -hmm. they do in Canvas too. Oh, yeah, well, it's the same tool, so yes. But I mean, it's integrated right in there in the same way it yeah. was in Blackboard? Yeah, if you make it available, right. it is. Yeah. Anybody else have any insights? Another thing I did is um, I have them change periodically who is going to submit. So it's not the same student who is doing the writing or doing the work. Because in chemistry, it's all, it's, it's not, it's more problem solving. So each time um, I, I have a, a worksheet kind of thing set up showing who is submitting and then the group members and I want them to change that person who will be doing, who will be responsible for uh, submitting. Yeah, uh, there was a, I remember a faculty member, she used to do something like that because she didn't want the, uh, the one student to be, the, the one student to take over and just do everything for the rest of their group. Um, um, I can't, she, she would, she would say she didn't want the student to be, I'm not going to say the name right, but it's harmony. I don't know, the the female character in Harry Potter, whatever she was, her name was. She, she would caution her students not to be that person. I can never pronounce the name. So, Terry, in the in the group set uh, business in Canvas, mm -hmm. um, you can have a leader each with each, within each group, right? Yes, in and fact, you can change get, that um, every time. Yeah, and then that uh, that could that that role could could uh, rotate around pretty easily. Yes, in fact, Alaka, that's a great point. Is that if you were uh, I'm come back here to my group, so um, you know you have your say your assignment group, and once you move these people in there, uh, you just open up the group, click the uh, the 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 snowman and then you can make that person the leader and then two weeks later you can come over and make that person the leader however you want to do that i don't think blackboard had this function i don't remember that you can assign a leader so that's great mm -hmm. or you can and again if you use this remove as leader button uh that person loses, you know, you can also set it up so nobody's the leader. So here, if you choose a leader, only that person can submit, others cannot? No, I think anybody can submit. Is that is yeah. that right, Terry? Yes. Anybody can submit it within the group. It doesn't have to be submitted by the leader. The leader's, the leader's big function is that they can change the name of the group. And uh, there's one other thing they can do. I, I think they can also remove people from the group. Uh, that's dangerous. <laughs> I, that's a little more power than I, I'm. <laughs> I, I don't think I would tell them they had that power. Let's. I out. wouldn't tell them they, they had the power. They can either. figure it out very easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you'll be, you'll you can't be able that. to know, right? Yeah, unfortunately, Adela looked into it. And you can't edit that power out. But now, if they remove it, like it will come to the instructor. So, I'm sorry. What was the question? Like, if a, somehow, I mean, if for any reason the leader removes, uh, but the instructor will know, right? Yeah, the instructor can overrule and just put them back in. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's a lot of power for us to have. Well, does anybody else have anything else they'd like to share? We're coming up on, on the hour. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I got some good input from, from everybody because you guys are using this. You know, it's, it's uh, Adela and I can show you all the bells and whistles, but we're not the ones who are using it day after day after day. So uh, we, I really appreciate your input and um, as far as how you're using them. So uh, uh, Alak, I really appreciate you sharing that information with us and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Terry, thank you very much and thanks everyone for attending. Good afternoon, well, thank you very everybody. much. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you.